<laughs> oh, hello. Stop. minutes later. Wow! 
Skatarii Vanguard Skatarii Vanguards are the basic infantry unit of the Forge Worlds. They are considered living radiation furnaces, as their bodies can emit enough radiation to corrode enemies at the cost of their lifespan. So what happens if a Vanguard bypasses the limit and increases its radiation to the maximum? The answer is called Radiant Wrath. Real name Skaterius Luminar 000011. An ancient Vanguard unit of the Forge World Metallica. It is unclear how it was designed. But it is recorded that this unit can contain and emit enough radiation to destroy life on an entire planet. It is a miracle that its body is not damaged when everything that comes near it dies. Metal is corroded and even the new sphere signal is infected with the virus. After being used to pacify a number of worlds, still alive or dead. Unknown. The tech priests put it into hibernation in a space station called Phylacore Terminus. Equipped with a massive weapon system just to protect or imprison it. Under the supervision of Mars, it was placed in a sealed container but the radiation it emitted was not completely contained. When the engine war started, Metallica found the unit, even though it was in the same system as Metallica. WTF? Transporting and releasing it was equivalent to disabling the virus bomb, almost wiping out the entire collection team, and it was done by a low-level tech priest. Best plan? When it was used to cleanse the planet Scorfax, we saw its true use, reusable exterminators. As soon as it was released into the atmosphere, the planet began to be affected. The entire planet was covered in heavy radiation, choking out all life on it, corroding fortresses and armored tanks. It was so terrible that one tech priest almost went insane. Titan. Forged by warpsmiths and dark muggles as an act of devotion to the supreme lord of blood and battle. Titan demon engines strut the battlefields of the 41st millennium, destroying all who dare oppose them. Bathed in blood, their thirst for battle is rarely quenched, and they will continue to slaughter foe after foe until the battlefield is drenched in blood. As tall as a Serastus knight, approximately 35 to 38 feet, Thank you very much. the chitin's upper body resembles the design of the fearsome Lord of Skulls, and its powerful lower limbs give it both height and speed. Armed with a powerful chitin Gatling cannon, its true weapon of choice is the Great Cleaver of Corn, which it wields with deadly effect when attacked. The chitin is protected by demonic rituals and the power of the warp to resist damage inflicted upon it by those lucky or skilled enough in the ways of fighting such abominations to survive its initial assault. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> first War for Armageddon The First War for Armageddon is the least known of the three wars on Armageddon, fought by the forces of Chaos and the Imperium. It was the result of years of preparation by the renegade Primar Changran, the Pet of Corn, to unite the world eaters after their disintegration at the hands of Karn the Betrayer after the Battle of Scalathrax. Before the battle, the war began within the hateful realm known as the Eye of Terror. The forces within, corrupted by chaos, 
often fought each other, but occasionally, for reasons unknown, they set aside their hatred and attacked their common enemy, the Imperium. In this case, the appearance of the Space Hulk Devourer of Star around a demon world united the forces of chaos. The Hulk was capable of containing a massive chaos force to attack the Imperial Guard. The erratic flow of the warp brought the invaders to the Imperial Hive world of Armageddon in 444.M41. At this time, on Armageddon, a strange chain of events occurred that culminated in armed rebellions breaking out in six settlements. Armageddon consisted of three major land masses. The majority of humans lived on the main continent, which was divided into two parts, Armageddon Prime and Armageddon Secundus. Separated by a thick strip of forest simply called Equatotrial. The rebellion was quickly quelled on Secundus. But in the settlement spread across a large area of Armageddon Prime. It was harder to eradicate. Just when the planetary defenses seemed to have defeated the rebellion. No further reinforcements were sent from the Imperium. Armageddon was far from the Eye of Terror. And no one could have guessed that the cause of the uprising was more sinister than simple civil unrest. Preoccupied with dealing with the rebellion, the Imperial forces were caught unawares when the Devourer of Stars arrived at the Armageddon star system. Recovering the threat, the Devourer of Stars now contained a massive chaos army commanded by the Primarch Ron. Chaos Marines from the World Eaters, Cultists, Daemon Hosts, Mutants and Beast Men, and hordes of demonic creatures poured out of the Space Hulk and landed on Armageddon. Prime. The latent effects of chaos quickly turned nearly half of the defenders against each other. The few remaining loyal defenders were quickly driven from Armageddon Prime. They withdrew through the jungle to the south. The survivors joining up with units from Armageddon Secundus and quickly deployed a defensive trench system along the rivers Styx and Chiron. Punji Kastala was the beautiful attendant of the teacher of the gods, Rihaspati. She once insulted a holy sage and was cursed to change into a female monkey. If she gave birth to an incarnation of Shiva, she could be relieved of the curse. Punji Kastala was reborn as Anjana, the daughter of Rishi Gautam. Anjana was a devotee of Shiva and began praying to him. Pleased with her devotion, Shiva promised to be born to her and relieve her of the curse. During King Dasaratha's yajna to beget sons, when the fire god, Agni, appeared with a bowl of payasam to be fed to Dasaratha's three wives, just then, an eagle swooped down and flew away with some of it in its beak. It dropped the payasam over the spot where Anjana was praying to Shiva. The god of winds, Pavana, blew hard and made the payasam fall in her outstretched hands. Anjana ate the payasam. Soon, Shiva, incarnated as a monkey, was born as Hanuman. Pavana became Hanuman's godfather. Because the wind helped in making this possible, Hanuman is called Pavanputra, or Son of the Wind. With the birth of Hanuman, Anjana was released from the curse. Before she returned to heaven, Hanuman asked his mother about his life ahead. Anjana lovingly assured him that he would never die. Hanuman grew up and inherited his father's mighty strength and the ability to fly swiftly. The birth of Hanuman is celebrated as Hanuman Jayanti, Kanza had imprisoned his sister, Devaki and Vasudeva, and killed every child that was born to Devaki. When Devaki and Vasudeva's sixth child was also killed by the wicked king, Devaki was very upset and began praying to Vishnu for help. 
One night, Vishnu, Vishnu appeared in Devaki's dream and said that the divine king of snakes, Seshnaga, would be born as her seventh child. He told her that the child would not be killed by Kansa. Miraculously, a baby that was conceived in Devaki's womb was transferred to the womb of Rohini, Vasudev's second wife. This baby was Balarama. Balarama was the elder brother of Krishna. Balarama was born in the village of Gokul in the full moon month of Sridhara in July. This is where his younger brother Krishna, the eighth born, also joined him later. He was named Rama but came to be known as Balarama, which means strong Rama for his superior strength. Kansa had imprisoned Devaki and Vasudeva. Devaki prayed to Vishnu. He promised to be born as her child. Accordingly, Devaki gave birth to her eighth child, the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu, on a stormy night on the eighth day of the month of Shravana. Miraculously, the iron chains round Vasudeva opened. The guards fell asleep and a voice said, take your child to the safe arms of Nanda in Gokul. Vasudev placed the baby in a casket and stealthily crept out of the prison. Amidst heavy rains, Vasudev crossed the river Yamuna carrying the newborn on his head. Seshnaga, the king of snakes, placed himself behind Vasudeva and spread his hood covering them like an umbrella. Vasudeva crossed the river safely and reached the gates of Gokul. Lord Vishnu once declared that whenever there is any danger on the earth, he would adopt a different form and come down on earth to save its people. One day, when Brahma was sleeping, Hayagriva, a horse-headed demon, stole the holy Vedas from under Brahma's head. He then ran away and hid in the depths of the ocean. Brahma had to read the holy books to create the universe. Since he was unable to do so now, he was very disturbed and approached Vishnu for help. Vishnu took the form of a fish and dived into the ocean to get back the Vedas from the terrible demon. There was a fierce fight between Vishnu and Hayagriva which went on and on. Finally, Vishnu killed the demon and brought the holy books back to Brahma. Brahma was very thankful and was able to resume reading the Vedas. Vishnu in this fish form is called Matsya Avatar. One day Parvati wanted to take a bath, but there was no one to guard her. So she created a young boy and asked him not to allow anyone to enter while she bathed. She named the little boy Ganesha. Soon, Lord Shiva returned and was surprised to see Ganesha. Ganesha refused to allow Lord Shiva to enter the house since Parvati had asked him not to allow anyone. Lord Shiva was furious and sent his bull, Nandi, to fight the boy, but Ganesha defeated Nandi. In a fit of rage, Lord Shiva cut off Ganesha's head. When Parvati came out and saw her son dead, she was furious. Shiva tried to console her, but she couldn't stop crying. She ordered Shiva to bring him back to life. Shiva asked Nandi to bring the head of the first creature he found. Nandi went to obey his command and returned with the head of an elephant. Lord Shiva placed the head of the elephant on Ganesha's body and brought him back to life. Okay, okay, you go. 